supposed to uh, minister in the month of April, because I'm on quarterly. Mm -hmm. And I felt sick at that time. I couldn't make it to um, administer the word. And even when I was preparing for today, the enemy was still fighting me. Yeah, he, does. he still won to keep my words choked up and locked up inside of me. He's afraid of the very thing that God put inside of me. He's afraid for me to let it out. Amen. So he fights me on every ground. Mm -hmm. Bodily affliction. Amen. Amen. Headaches. Where my mind can't stay focused. But I was getting myself ready. You know, the Lord had strengthened me. Amen. You know? I turn to him, and I seek and I inquire of the Lord for him to grant me grace today. So it doesn't matter what affliction may be going on inside of me, that his will will be done. Amen. Amen? Amen. And church, today I want to talk to you. My topic is really about the God of a second chance. Amen. You see, how this came to me, from my last appointed time when I was supposed to minister the word until now, I've been through some things. Mm. And I can only minister to you what the Lord has taken me through. Amen. And what I have overcome and what I have experienced. Mm -hmm. And since the year of 2014 started, he showed me a whole new game plan to what his will and his purpose is about. Amen. You know, we can write things down on paper, you know, and we can set goals, and we can put principles, and we can try to work those goals and principles. But his plans always prevail. Mm -hmm. For he said, I know the talk and the plans for every man, for Amen. good and not for evil. Amen. Amen? We all know God by our name. Each and every one of us is a name that stood out to us about him, what he's like to us, what he has done for us. We all do. Some of us know him as a healer. So we said, my God of a healer. Some of us know him as a provider. My God who provides. Some of us know him as the deliverer. My God who delivers. But I have come to know him as the God of a second chance. Even though I know him by all those other names, and there's many more I know him by, but I've come to know him of a God of a second chance. His very son that he sent forth into the world is a God of a second chance. Amen. You see, the first Adam came, and he failed at what he was supposed to do. But then God had to send someone else in order to fix what the first Adam couldn't have done. Amen. And I call him my God of a second chance. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share with you why he's the God of a second chance. Amen. Amen? Let's turn to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 17, page 12, 11. For those who are tuning in by live stream, the book of John, chapter 3, page 1211 in the Amplified. When you get there, say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 17, it says, for God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge. So he did not come to judge anyone, to reject. Neither did he come to reject anyone, to condemn, nor condemn us, or to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe 
and sung through him. Amen. So Christ came in order that we would have been saved, that we would have been protected. Amen? Amen? Because after the days of Noah, men became evil. We were not right in God's eyes any longer. And God had to find a way in order to save us. And who could have come to save us no more than his only son, the one who did not have any sin, Amen. the one who did not have any blemish, no Amen. spots, no stain. He needed someone of pureness to come and to do what he sent him to do. So now while I was reading the scripture, it stood out to me. I said, even in your very present, O oh Lord, when you were here on planet Earth, that shows me how you've given us a second chance of life. Mm -hmm. To be saved. To inherit eternal life. And have the ability to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And it says in verse 18, he who believes in him, who clings to, trusts in, rely on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him, there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does not believe, <coughs> cleave to, Rely on, trust in him is judged. Already, he has already been convicted and has already received his sentence because he has not believed him and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Those who does not believe in Christ, those who do not trust in him or cleave to him, they are already being condemned. But the ones who believed, the one who trusts like us, the one who cleaves to him, Amen. we are free from condemnation. Yeah. We are free from the judgment. We are free from the penalty of debt. We are free from the law of sin. Amen? Second chance. Second chance. Amen. Let's turn to John 6. You mean we blew the first chance? Blew the first chance. No, no going back to the first chance? No going back. <laughs> John chapter 6, verse 38 to 40. We're going to focus on the Lord a little bit before we get into it. We've got to open up all things with the Lord put in force in all things. So John chapter 6, verse 38 to 40, and that's page 1218, if you're using the Amplified Bible. If you're there, say amen. amen. Verse 38 says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, mm. but to do the will and purpose yes. of him who sent me. Amen. Christ is saying, I did not come on my own authority. I came for a specific reason. Amen. There was a job that needed to be done. And I had to come because my father sent me to get it done. I came to do his will, and I came to fulfill his purpose. So the whole world will be saved. Amen. So the whole world will have an opportunity to be reconciled back to the father. Amen. Amen? 
Verse 39. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall not lose any, all that he has given me, but that I should give new life and raise them all up on the last day. So he came to give new life, didn't he, church? Amen. He came so you can have a second chance to experience new life, the resurrected life. Amen. Not the life in the body or in the flesh or in the world. Mm. The life of the spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that why he came? Amen. Yes. Amen. Verse 40. For this is my father's will and his purpose, that everyone who sees the son and believes in and cleaves to and trusts in and rely on him should have eternal life. So this is why he came. That anyone who sees the Son and believes in the Son and trusts in the Son shall have this second chance. This is why I said he's a God of a second chance. Who else could have come and granted us this opportunity? Who else could have come and match up to the task that he had to go through? The pain and the suffering. The journey that he had to walk. Who else could have come and done it? Who else could have granted you the opportunity today to sit here today to hear these words? Hmm. Who else? Hmm. But one who is highly favored. Hmm. Like him. Yes, Lord. You have to be blessed today. Hmm. You have to rejoice today. Life is not about living. When you look at your life, and every morning that you get up out of your bed, you have breath. Every morning that you can move, every morning that you can speak, every morning that you can do all things, your faculty, bodily members, everything is functioning inside of you. And that is because of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. the second Adam that came to earth. Amen. Amen. Apart from him, there will be no second chance. Amen. Amen. Many times we don't take life seriously. Mm. Why are we here? Many times we're busy doing our own thing. Many times we're busy saying what we want to say. Many times we live life carelessly. And we miss the true divineness of why we are here. I call him a God of second chance. He has granted me second chance in so many things. Amen. I am not perfect. None of us is. Mm -mm. I have messed up a lot of things. Mm. Didn't know how to fix it. Tried to fix it with the same <laughs> attitude and the same mind, and the situation just got worse. <laughs> but when I realized that God is my second chance, and through him and by him, I can fix the things the way how he wants me to fix it. And I'll mend the brokenness. I give him praise and thanks for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's turn to the book of Luke. Amen. The book of Luke, chapter 4. Page 1162 of the Amplified, the book of Luke chapter 4 from verse 18 to the 19. Now this scripture is one of our prayer audience. Mm -hmm. And it is very essential to our prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because when we look around us, or even when we look at ourselves, we have an idea of what's happening. When we walk the streets, and we see many people suffering from affliction, Amen. many people frustrated, Sorry. many people tottering off to the slaughterhouse, <laughs> many people bruised, crushed, downtrodden, <laughs> under severe oppression, contemplating suicide. Yeah. 
And the scripture says, Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel, to the poor. So the poor need to hear the gospel, don't they? So wherever we go, whoever is poor in spirit needs to hear the gospel. Amen. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. He has sent me to announce release to the captives mm -hmm. and the recovery of the sight to the blind. Now, this is the problem. You may be poor in the spirit and lack the gospel, but when you are blind, the enemy triumphs over you. Mm -hmm. Because you have no sight, you cannot see what is going on. He said, I came to release those who are in captivity. I came to release them and to give them sight to the blind. And we know in the days of Christ, when he was walking on the earth, he did a lot of miracles, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And one of the most, most miracles that he ever did was to give sight. Mm -hmm. Not just physical sight, spiritual sight. Many of us may have physical sight, but we don't have spiritual sight. In a sense, we're still blind. Mm -hmm. We can see the things physically, but we can't see what it is. We cannot see the purpose of it. So that makes us blind too. I have walked the street, and every time I walk the street, the Lord is always pointing on things. Mm -hmm. And my heart pains me. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in my own life, whether it's somebody close to me, their lives, or what is even the people in the street, or even the very people that came to the store and shop? Mm -hmm. How beaten up they are. Mm -hmm. How crushed. How they are under severe forces. And oppression, darkness, cloud, they vision. They don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says, Broad is the road to destruction, mm. and narrow is the path to the kingdom. Yeah. Which road are you willing to take? Broad is the road where there's so many fancy things, so many distractions to keep drawing you more to it. And narrow is the way where it's less mm. to save your life. He said, I came to recover the sight of the blind. When I think about the Lord, how he has recovered me, mm -hmm. I shall praise his Amen. Mm -hmm. When I think about the Lord, when the people around me, how he has recovered them, mm -hmm. I give him glory. Amen. When I think about the Lord, what he has done for me this past couple of months, I shed tears. Because I come to know him as a God of a second chance. Amen. I was one blind, but now I have sight. Thank you, Jesus. I was once in darkness, leading to the road of destruction, but he pulled me back. He said, those who are tottering off to the slaughter, hold them back from their doom. Amen. When we see our brothers and sisters going off to the house of doom, we got to hold them back. We may not can hold them back physically, but we can hold them back in prayer. Yes, 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 yes. This is a prayer ordinance of us here. Very scripture yeah. that we pray for every Friday, every corporate night mm -hmm. to release the captives. Yes. Many of our brothers and sisters are captives in the mind. They're captives in their body Amen. to addiction, to abuse, to violence, Amen. to lust, Amen. to sex. Amen. You're still captives. Yeah. 
Whatever is dominating you, you are a captive to it. You are a slave under its power. Amen. And the Lord said, I came to release you from the captivity. Amen. I know what it's like to be released from the things that had strong holds and strong grip upon me. Amen. So when I prayed this ordinance on a Friday night, my soul beat inside. Because when I think about the Lord and what he has done, yeah. how can I not weep inside? How can I not thank him for being a God of the second chance? My message today is the God of the second chance. Amen. Amen. Because you can take one scripture, but there's so many meanings, so many in depth to a scripture. And only he can reveal it to you in many different ways. Amen. It continues. To send forth as deliver those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity, broken down by distress. I love the scripture because we are all once here. Yeah. We are all once here. We are all once depressed at some point in time in the life whereby we just wanted to give up. There was no hope. Yeah. We are all once here whereby we were downtrodden. Yeah. We are all once here whereby we were broken yeah. because the hardship of life, the hardship of the world, has broken us because we are no match for what's out there. If you think you are a match for what's out there, you are no match for it. The enemy is just waiting just to devour upon you. You are no match for him. But as my Lord and Savior Jesus came and he said, here I am now to deliver you out of bondage. Amen. Just in the days of Egypt when the Israelites was under Pharaoh oppression, they were downtrodden, they were bruised, they were crushed. The Lord called Moses. He said, I will send you back to Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to tell Pharaoh, let my people go because I have heard their cry and they plead. And it is time for him to let them go. Amen. Whether it's willingly or forcefully, he will let them go. Mm. Yes. And the Israelite was in captivities for 40 years. Or even more. And at that time, Moses didn't even know who he was. When the Lord called him, he didn't even want to do the task that the Lord asked him to do. But as he spent his time and the days with the Lord, he grew even stronger. Strong enough to return to Egypt, to face fear, hardship. A man who hard was hard like stone. But the Lord was with Moses all these days. You know, I was reading Watch Mani, the ministry of the word. And he said, the very thing that you do physically is sometimes what God wants you to do spiritually. Amen. But you just don't know it yet. <laughs> Peter was the fisherman fishing in the river. As kids, we used to have this nursery rhyme. Peter was a fisherman fishing in the river. And the Lord came and he saw Peter. And he said, there is a chosen one that shall become the rock 
There is a chosen one that the, the church shall be built upon him. There is the chosen one who is going to be an apostle. He shall be a fisher of men. Amen. The very thing that Peter used to do physically, throw his drag nets into the sea to catch fishes in order that he can sell that to feed himself <coughs> and his family. He didn't know that he would become something more Amen. than just his physical duties. Because the Lord had came to release him. The Lord told him to follow me. Leave all that you are doing now and just follow me here. You got such a chance. And I shall show you what a life in the spirit is like. Amen. I shall give you, I shall grant you a second chance at it. Because back in those days, Peter and all the, the disciples, they were uneducated men. They weren't like Paul, who had an opportunity sure. to study with the elect. So he became elect, because he said, you are a product of your environment. Mm. So if you're in an environment where there's no schools, where there's no teaching, then obviously you're going to be uneducated. All you will know is just physical work. But the uneducated fishermen became an apostle of God. Amen. The uneducated fishermen who denied Christ became an apostle of God. So if God see all that what Peter was, and he said, yes, Peter, despite the fact you may have some hindrances, because that's what it is. You're blocking the spirit. And all that you're showing right now is all physical. It's all the, the physical nature, the outside man. Yeah. But yet, you are something very powerful within you. Hmm. Peter became an apostle. Moses, a murderer from a leader that led the Israelites out of Egypt. Paul, who ran after the saint to slay them, became an apostle of all, wrote one third of the New Testament. Now how great is God when he grants second chances? Amen. How great is he? Now my next scripture I'm about to go read, folks, I want to demonstrate something to you. Because of the many times, you know, even when God takes us out of the slum, when he pulls us up from the water and brings us on the ark, and those who are around us or those who are still swimming in the water with the head barely tilted above the water so they won't drown. Sometimes we can blind to who they are or what they can become. I have experienced this. So I move into the next scripture. Luke 7, verse 36 to 50. Luke 7, verse 36. If you know you're on the ark, you're blessed. Amen. But if you know a brother or sister who's not on the ark, don't give up on them. Amen. Just like how Christ didn't give up on any of us. Amen. If Christ was to handpick just a few bunch, then what would have happened to the majority? Would they have a second chance of eternal life? Would they have a second chance of being like Peter, where they had a second chance for being like Paul, where they had a second chance like the Mary Magdalene in the Bible, when all the men of the village wanted to stone her to death when she ran into Christ. Amen. So Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. Page 1169 in the Amplified Bible. 
I'm going to take you somewhere today to the scripture. And it says, One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. So in the days of Christ, when he was on planet Earth and when he was teaching and when he was going around all the neighboring towns, there were Pharisees and Sadducees, the ones who think they were the elect, the ones who think they were educated, but in truth, they were not. They were just doctrinists. Amen? So Jesus went, even though they were sinners themselves, and one of them asked Christ to come and dine in his house, to sit at his table, he agreed. Because wherever the Lord goes, his spirit is always there. And who so is willing and pleased to accept that spirit, they receive it. Amen? Amen? And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner. She was especially a wicked sinner. So she was notorious. To what she did, the Bible did not say. But according to what it said, she was especially wicked sinners. When she learned that Christ was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask of ointment perfume. Mm -hmm. So even though this woman was a cast out, she was a reject to society. No one welcomed her. No one wanted anything to do with her. When she heard about the Lord, she had the heart about what the Lord was doing. Or the, or, or the Father had to call her. For Christ said, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him to me. Or the Father put a desire in his heart to come to me. Mm -hmm. So something had to happen for that woman to pick up the most expensive thing that she had. You remember? The most expensive thing that she had. The valuable thing that she had physically. And she took it. And she set out to go and look for the Lord. Imagine, I especially wicked sinner set out to look for the Lord. And those who were around him didn't even know who he was. Now you see the comparison here. Amen? And standing behind him, had his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Yeah. So when she approaches the Lord, when she senses his presence, she came into brokenness. She started to shed tears. Amen. She came to a point where she see her life was decaying. That she no longer want to live that life anymore. And some of us may know people like this. We see them all the time. Or we may hear about someone like this. But who can save man? Only the one and only true living God. Amen. Even though we may talk to these people, or brother or sister, or whoever it is, we can talk and talk all that we want. But if they haven't got to a place of repentance and brokenness, while we're talking, let's go to waste. Amen? And she wiped them with her hair. So even though her tears fell on his feet, she bent down and she took his hair and she started to wipe his feet. Compassion for the Lord. Didn't matter who she was. Didn't matter how much wicked things she has done. When she stepped in front of the Lord, it was no more about her sins with him. Amen. It's about how can I release you? How can I make you no longer to be a captive? How can I no longer make you be a person who's oppressed, a person who's bruised, a person who's crushed, a person who's downtrodden? See, the Lord sees things differently from us. 
and kiss his feet affectionately and anointing him with the ointment for him. So the sinner took the most valuable thing that she had around her. She went out and she went seeking for the Lord. No one knows how many houses she probably had to went by to find him. All she heard that he was at a Pharisee house reclining, sitting down there. She just wanted to find him. Just like the woman who was bleeding for over 12 years. All she wanted, if I can just reach out, faint, reach out and touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be healed. Amen. I know my infirmities will no longer be. I know that I will become whole. That's all she wanted. It's the same thing with the woman. All she wanted was to find him. And sometimes in life we are seeking we are looking for the one thing to satisfy us. So we're seeking all over the place. If I have more money, it would satisfy me. If I have the right husband, it will satisfy me. If I have the right job, I will make more money to enjoy my life more. Amen. If I have the nice car, jealousy arises. We are always looking for something. But the question is, what is it that we're looking for? But this woman had to be, she come to, to herself that she didn't want to live the life that she was living no more. So she needed to see the Lord. And if you're in a place right now whereby you're stuck and you don't want to be in that place right now, just like how this woman went out to look for the Lord, you need to look for the Lord. You need to seek him. You need to inquire of him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. 39. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw it. Now you have a, <laughs> there's always judgmental people around. So when the Pharisees saw that this notorious woman came in to see the Lord, when he saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is. Now, here's a question. Mm -hmm. The so-called Pharisee supposed to be a man of God. Isn't so? Mm -hmm. And when a sinner approaches his house, he starts to quarrel within him. Why is she here? Do you know who she is? Why is the outcast the reject here? Let's continue. And he says, surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. It's like she wasn't supposed to touch the Lord. It's not like she was filled with so much filth that she didn't have the right to touch the Lord. She's supposed to be cast out and boxed up in her own, among her own people. And you see this happening in society today. Certain people are so boxed out, it's like they're not welcome in other parts of the society. For she is a notorious sinner, a social outcast, devoted to sin. But this woman was a sinner. Everything of her was devoted to sin. Maybe that's all she knew. Maybe that was her surrounding. Maybe there was no one to teach or taught her the right way or to show her a way better. So she grew up with this. And that's all she can do. That's all she probably did to earn a living. A spirit, a demonic spirit, was controlling her. She was possessed somehow by something. And all she does was sin. She didn't know to do anything other than just sin. Let's 
see what the Lord says. And Jesus replied, said to him, Simon, that was his name, I have something to say to you. And he answered, teacher, say it. A certain lender of money at interest had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. Jesus. So the debtor forgave them both. You don't have no means of paying me back? I am letting it go. I am forgiving you. For the Bible said, forgive those who trespass against you, for you shall be forgiven. So whether it's in debt, whether it's in offense, Whatever it is, forgive them. Mm -hmm. And it continues. Now, which of them will love him more? Mm -hmm. Simon answered, The one I take it for whom he forgave and canceled more. Mm -hmm. In truth, that would be so, right? Let's say I owe Pastor Fraser $1 million. Mm -hmm. And Sister Jessica only owing fifty thousand dollars. Neither of us have no means to repay Pastor Fraser, and he said, "I forgave the debt." Now, who is going to have more compassion and more love for him? The one with the million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. More than the one with the fifty thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, "And Jesus said to him, you have decided correctly." Then turning towards the woman, mm -hmm. now he turned towards the woman, and he said to Simon. Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Amen. So the notorious sinner had more compassion for the Lord than the one who wasn't a notorious sinner. She took her very, the very thing that she owned and she offered that to the Lord. He says in verse 45, You give me no kiss, but she, from the moment I came in, has not ceased Amen. intermittently to kiss my feet tenderly and caress. You see, church, mm -hmm. we cannot be like Pharisees. Mm -hmm. We have to be the way how Christ wanted us to be. We cannot be trapped in the word and the spirit is on use. Mm -hmm. There's power in the word and the spirit come together. We have brothers and sisters around us. Right now in your life, nothing seems to be going right. <laughs> nothing seems to be going right. And all we can see is what they have done wrong. What they cannot do, what they're supposed to do, but yet they're not doing it. judgment. And we talk idle words. But what the Lord is saying. And even though you may see what is wrong on the outside, but I'm worried what's on the inside. What they can transform into. Yes. Well, when we see this thing happening around us, we have to pray. Yes. Sometimes we cannot help them by helping them physically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our one and only weapon is prayer. Mm -hmm. To pray constantly over their lives. We cannot forget where we were. 
And someone else was, has been praying for us to get to where we are. Or somewhere along the way, we meet a good Samaritan who picked up the man that was injured and took him to the innkeeper. And he took money out of his pocket and he gave it to the innkeeper. He said, take care of him. And when I return, if there's any balance overdue, I will pay you it. We know the story of love, of compassion mm -hmm. of the Samaritan along the way. Where the Levite got robbed and he was left there. And all his other brothers and sisters of his own kind, his own share of fate, came along and they left him there. Isn't that so? And someone out of the unexpected came along, picked him up, and take care of him. And so must we do for our own brothers and sisters and those who God can trust in to us. Sometimes we have to carry them. For a long time too. For God is saying all is not lost. He's saying all is not lost. For the work you put out, he said, I shall reward you for it. I saw this when I was much younger with my grandma and my aunt. The work she put out, all is not lost for her. her. I'm tearing today. situation, go into prayer. Seek of him, inquire of him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go to someone of stronger faith than you are. And ask them to pray with you. So the Lord can shed light. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. on my head, cheap ordinary oil, but this woman took the most expensive thing that probably worth how much? 300 denarii. That's a whole wages back in those days for our labor man who labors. That's a whole year wages. And on the very account or very appointed with the Lord, she gave it to him. But she has anointed my feet with costly Rare perfume. She took all that she had. She poured onto the Lord. And sometimes when we go to the Lord, all we have is our heart. We have nothing more because we are wretched. What more can we offer to Him that would be pleasing unto Him? Amen. Nothing but our heart. The expression of the heart is the tears. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing more. So this is this notorious sinful woman. Mm. Yeah. I'm speaking to my brethren today. Mm. Because I know God has chosen the bunch of us here. Mm. And there's a reason why maybe he hasn't flood these seats yet. Because the people that are going to come off of this street are going to be like this notorious sinful woman. Mm. And how are we going to deal with them? How are we going to show the love and the compassion? Mm. How are we going to deal with all the brokenness? Mm. How are we going to deal with the ones who are so crushed that you can't even pick them up right away? You got to spoon fed them. Mm. How are we going to deal with the ones who are abused, mentally, physically abused? Mm -hmm. Their mind is trapped. Life 
life always shows up, doesn't it? Because oh God always brings someone your way mm -hmm. to show you. There are many of these in the world, there are many. Every man has his own cross to carry. Yes. Amen. Every man has his own cross to carry. And God is going to bring certain kinds of people, things, and situations into our life. Mm -hmm. And we all have to deal with it. Hallelujah. 47. Therefore I tell you, our sins are many, Christ said. This woman's sins is many because he knows this. He's the God. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden from him. As they are, and he said, also are forgiven her because she has loved much. Amen. She come off of the street probably in rags. Not the most appealing human being you might want to have a hang out with. Come sit next to me, have a drink, let's eat, let's talk, let's chat. No! Just like the beggars on the street, some of them they walk. You can tell their mind is not right. They sit. They eat up off the ground, eat out of the trash can, and people will walk and people will scorn them. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's still a little light of love is born inside of her. Mm -hmm. The unimportant one becomes the most important one. Yes. But he who is forgiven little loves little. Mm -hmm. If you have any for unforgiveness inside of you today, mm -hmm. let it be done today that you will no longer hold on to that unforgiveness. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. How much offense that we have offended God and he has forgiven us. You think you deserve to be here? You think anyone deserves to be here? But no, he gave, he gave us a second chance. Yeah. Second chance of life. Second chance to be forgiven. Second, second chance to live a life. In Christ Jesus. Yes. Second chance to experience the kingdom. Hmm. Second chance to when our body left this earth and is gone, our spirit can still walk the glorious day ahead of us. Sometimes we just think about what's now, or we're not thinking about what's coming. The glorious days are coming. Amen. Some of us might have to go oh, through the pain, suffering, and toil. No, but your glorious days are coming. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. You're going to walk on those pearly gates. Go through those golden gates. The glorious days are coming. When Christ died, buried, resurrected, ascended back to the heaven, where did he went and sit? Oh. At the right hand throne by the Father. Then he had to go through the strife and the struggle of the earthly life. Yes, he did. He came in the human form, did he not? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he spit on? Mm. Wasn't he whipped? Wasn't he cursed at? But yet he still pressed on because he knew what he came for. He said, I not came on my own accord. We read that earlier in the scripture. He said, I came because my father sent me to do his will and fulfill his purpose. Amen. So if I have to suffer the abuse and all this, I will suffer it. Yeah. My task must be completed. He saw the joy ahead. See, Paul said, when he was finished, he said, I have finished my race. Amen. But which man can stand there and tell me I did not endure what I endured? Mm -hmm. Just to preach the gospel to the poor. And back in those days, <laughs> they had it worse, I think, than what we have now. The certain territory you dare not step foot in. They will stone you and throw you out to the gates. Matter of fact, stone you to death. Amen. But yet they still press on. They had no fear. See, fear was not inside of them. Hmm. Stephen, when he was lying there, and Paul was looking on and was stoning Stephen to death. Amen. He was still, the word of God was still in his lips. Hmm. He did not denounce him. He still laid a form strong in his faith and his spirit. Mm -hmm. Whole church. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. And verse 48 says, And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a glorious and joyful day when the Lord said, Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I hold no more account of you anymore. Go freely. Go into the world. Go freely and live the life that I created for you to live. Amen. A life of second chance. Then those who were at the table, verse 49, with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Amen. Now they are these was the elect ones, the ones who are supposed to know God and the Son of God. Were they supposed to know him? Hmm? Weren't these ones supposed to know? They had the scripture. They walk around with the scripture most of the time, dressed in gowns and robes. Belongs to the policies. And yet, they did not know me. And yet, someone off to the road, a sinful woman, came in and she met with the Lord. That was her visitation day, where her life was going to change forever. No more were under the oppression. No more did she feel bruised and crushed inside her spirit, wounded. She was released. She was no more a captive. Verse 50. But Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go, enter into peace. In freedom from all the distresses that are experienced, as a result of sin. Yeah. You see, calamity is an experience of a result of sin. Yeah. Yes. But he said, here I am to release you from that calamity. And you will no more experience it. Somebody say amen. 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 Oh yes, what a wonderful time. Satan, <laughs> I feel sorry for you now. <laughs> you are trying to keep me bound today. But the Lord is saying, no, 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 Amen. no. She Amen. must administer. Amen. Amen. Now, church, let me take you to a different path. You know, like I said earlier, I cannot minister what the Lord hasn't taken me through. Amen. I want to take you to a path where I've been through lately. Amen. And before we start off, just turn your book to the book of Isaiah 41, chapter 10, page 796. Isaiah chapter 10, Isaiah chapter 41, sorry, chapter 41, verse 10. Chapter 41, verse 10. Verse 10. Beautiful scripture. Very comforting scripture. When you are walking with God and you have to encounter a lot of things in life. And sometimes the reason why we have to encounter those things in life is because of all the things left undone. And sometimes God has to take you back to those things undone because he wants you to close it up. Don't let no loose and untie. Sometimes part of it has to do with family. He wants it to be fixed. Can't have anything trailing you. And in verse 10, says, 41, verse 10. Am I on the right page? Yes. 41, verse 10. Fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes. I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. So let me share something with you now. 
At the beginning of the year, who knows what the Lord has laid out for me or what I have to encounter. All seems to be going well. And then around in the month of February, I get a message saying that someone has passed away. I have heard of this person's illness ahead of time. But you see, 10 years back, as young as I was, and I was not in the spirit of the Lord or living the life of Christ, I made a lot of mistakes. Caused a lot of harm, offended people. And I always wanted to go back and to fix it, but I didn't know how. And fear, which is evidence appearing to be real, was in me. So I didn't know. Fear alone overtook me. Matter of fact, it immobilized me. That I couldn't go. But there's one thing I always did was to pray. I didn't know the time or the hour when God was going to answer his prayers or when he was going to open the door for a second chance for me to go back. Mm -hmm. Ten years. No, that's a decade, isn't it? So fear in itself can immobilize someone for a lifetime. It happened to me for 10 years. But other people could be for a lifetime. So when the opportunity came for me to go back, I was like a nervous wreck. Everything seems to be going off balance. Couldn't think straight. Matter of fact, I didn't even eat. Because all the thoughts and all the memory from the past keep resurfacing. Mm -hmm. That's what fear can do to you. Once it's in you, mm -hmm. whatever is done in the past, it can resurface all of a sudden. Just like the prodigal son, he took his inheritance and he ran. He went and he squandered it. When he was at a point of brokenness and he didn't have anything anymore, he decided to head back home to his father's house. And the day came when I had to go back. And I remember seven days prior to that day, I went in to pray and fast. Because I had to go back. If I didn't have to go back without pray and fast, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but I had to go back. My only hope was in the Lord. Amen. But whatever come against me on that day, then so be it. But once the Lord was with me, I know I would have overcome fear. There's different level of fear. Let me inform you of that one. There's different level of fear. And you won't know where you are until you have to deal with something that you rejected. And then the Lord said, no, I want you to deal with it. Then you know what level of fear is inside of you. What level of torment it can bring upon you. And I prayed that day. Early morning, I got up and I prayed and I just went with feet and the Lord. Well, you see, the Lord opened up the door for a second chance in order. What I have taught and what I had in mind was not what was going to happen. Because when I got there, I was welcomed with warmness, mm. as if nothing ever happened. As if no harm was done. Mm -hmm. As if no foul mounted word was said. Mm -hmm. As if I didn't cause any pain or any hurt. Mm -hmm. And an opportunity came for me to make my amend amendments. And I went for home too. Amen. Jesus. And the Lord just opened up the way. You see, this is why I have to thank him. 
This is why I know him as the God of second chances. Amen. Not many people have the opportunity for a second chance. <clears throat> Sometimes on your first account, that's it, you're done. Yeah. You're done. There's no opportunity for you to be reconciled, for you to have any sort of reconcil reconciliation. You blew it the first time, you're done. But I want to pray all the time. Ten years. Ten years. Sometimes it takes even more than a lifetime to fix a problem that happened generation for generation. Someone still have to go back and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone still have to go back and fix it. And I didn't went in there with no cockiness. I went in there humble. And I set my peace and asked for forgiveness. And it was done. And that day I glorified God. I said, God, if you were the God of second chance, would I have the opportunity to deal with this problem? Would you have given me the strength and the ability to overcome fear at that level? What do you have? I thank you for that. Amen. I thank you. It says, fear not. Why are you in such fear? There's nothing to fear, he said. There's nothing to fear. For I am with you. I'm always with you, my princess. Do not look around you in terror. Do not panic to what's happening. A soldier of battle can never have fear inside of him. He can cause his whole troop, their lives. Amen. If he's in commander. Amen. In the days of David, he couldn't have any fear inside of him when he went out to battle. You have to go with boldness. And he said, and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and did he not strengthen me? Did I want it to go back if you ask me? No. Did, did I put up a fight of going back? Yes. Ask my aunt. <laughs> ask my uncle, because I talked to him. <coughs> Pass the child, because I talked to him about it. Did I want to go out there with him? No, she didn't want to. But the encouraging word at that time helped me Amen. to go and seek the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sure. And he said, I shall harden you through these difficult times. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we're so soft, you know, we don't let puppy up. Because <laughs> I gotta harden you, I gotta press, apply the pressure. I gotta toughen you up a bit. Too soft. You're too soft. Too fleshy. You're too soft and you're too fleshy, Satan will beat you up. <laughs> you gotta become a little bit tough. He said, I will help you. Yes, I will help you. In the book of Romans 10, he said, those who believe and those who trust in me. He said, I will not see you disappointed or be put to shame. Amen. One of our ordinances that we read every Sunday in, in, in church, it said, I will not relax my hold on you. I will not, I will not. He said, I will help you, yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. God loves to see justice. Not injustice, not unrighteousness, righteousness. So the Lord has taken me back. And now, church, if I tell you what is going on, I'm going to pinch myself. <laughs> is this real? Is this real? Well, let's continue. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. I want to take 
much longer. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse 18 to 21, page, verse 18 to 21, page 1352. Amen. Amen. Are we there? Amen. And the scripture says, from verse 18, but all things are from God. Who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Amen. Receive us in favor. Brought us into harmony with himself. And gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. So we have a ministry of reconciliation. That all things must be reconciled back unto God. Mm -hmm. Whether it's family. Whether it's friends. Whether it's your business. Whether it's your community, all things must be reconciled back unto him. Because he's the originator, the source, and the origin of all things. The creator. He's the blueprint of each and every one of us. Amen. And when all things are going to be reconciled back unto God, he always provides the way for it to happen. Amen. Once it is not doomed, neither is it lost. He said that by the word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. So let me tell you, church, mm -hmm. that the Lord has brought my family back. My dad, mm -hmm. my brother, and even an extended family of them. Mm -hmm. He has brought them back. Amen. You see, because this part of my life, you know, there was a big gap left there. And it couldn't stay there anymore. And the Lord said it was time. It was time. And as a matter of fact, my brother made the bold step and called me. <laughs> And he talked to me as if he was talking to me for a lifetime. He never asked any question what went wrong. How hurt he was or nothing. He was just happy. Joyful. That he can see his sister. And I know sometimes in life we have family members who we are going through such a hard time with right now. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Yeah. Family members who are going through such a hard time mm -hmm. with right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, and we want to see the best for them and their families. But sometimes all we can see on the outside is a struggle. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know. Keep praying. I have done it for 10 years. I didn't know when it was going to happen, but it will happen. Doesn't matter who it is, whether it's mother, father, brother, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, daughters, sons, keep praying. Amen. Amen. The Lord has his own time and appointment to fix all things. It's the right time and the right season. Amen. Keep praying. See, Satan just wants to see our family destroyed. He doesn't want to see no harmony. He doesn't want to see no functionality. He doesn't want to see no togetherness. He doesn't want to see no love. But he wants to see strife, abuse, separation, pain, distrust. Those are the things that he wants to see. And the God that we serve is not a God of any of those things. And if we say we serve God and we know someone right now, mm. we got to pray. Amen. If you can't pray by yourself, you call one of your other brothers and sisters and ask them to pray with you. 
whether you commit to 21 days, 40 days of praying, pray. Plant the seed. Mm. Exercise your faith. Mm. Now let God do the rest. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we try to fix, fix it physically, it gets worse. Yes. So sometimes it's better to back off and just pray. Stand behind the curtain and pray. Pray for the reconciliation. You see, prayer is very important. This is why prayer at night is important. That's why even when in my sick moment, I still make it up. If I can't pray, let the Spirit pray for me. Amen. But I make it up. All my effort. The Lord saw me and he vindicated me. Amen. Do you have to do the same? It doesn't matter what's going on. It's not about what's going on right now. Forget what's happening right now. I tap into the spirit. Mm -hmm. And be still and know that he is God. Amen. And he will reveal it to you. If it doesn't come to you, you're always someone else. It comes to you. Oh, church, I thank you for this day. Amen. Oh, I thank you for this day. This one was coming. <laughs> yes. Remember, he is the God of second chance. Amen. But every giving account is the God of second chance. He's a God who wants to see all things in harmony. Back together as one, as a whole. He does not like separation. He doesn't like bits and pieces. He likes everything as whole and complete. Perfect. Did he not make us whole and complete? Mm -hmm. So there's no room for separation. There's no room to give up on your brothers and your sisters. There's no room to give up on that friend or that daughter or that niece or nephew. There's no room to give up on them. Christ did not give up on us. Mm -hmm. So we cannot give up on those that are around us. Okay. Or those that he entrusts that he brought into our life. There's no room for that. Doesn't matter how frustrated you may be. How much time you want to give up. When you can't do it, call out for help. There's no room. And I stand there to tell you there's no room to quit right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close there. Amen? Amen.